it's great to be able to watch football and not have to work football, which happened last night. We were texting during the Colorado-North Dakota State game. North Dakota State gave them a run for their money, and just like last year, questionable clock management by Colorado. Unlike last year, though, I saw that MDS posted this. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, Coach Colorado, entering his second year. A lot of hype at 3-9 and nine last season, and a lot of criticism recently because he doesn't take criticism very well. He actually was asked about it last year when they had very poor clock management while trying to come back to beat USC. No questions about the lack of urgency. I remember watching the game. Like, clock is ticking. You're down multiple scores. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Last night, up, trying to milk the clock. Long pass thrown when long pass wasn't needed. Long pass falls incomplete. Dion asked about it. He said his son Shador was just trying to help the receiver get a catch. And and it it sounded as if Dion approved of it. At least he knew enough to or disapproved of it. He knew enough to say it's not something we should have done, but your quarterback's got to know the circumstances. Yeah. And I mean, they they just escaped what would have been fourth and long and they would have had to punt thanks to an interference penalty on a long throw that Shadour made when he looked like he might get sacked and North Dakota State might have pretty good field position down five points with enough time to try to win the game. They just got lucky because the defender ran into the receiver before the ball got there. That's when you should shift into milk the clock mode. So that was surprising to see because they did give North Dakota State a chance to pull out the win and if Colorado had lost to North Dakota State right out of yeah. the gates, oh, my God, that would have been not a good sign for Dion's second season in Boulder. Well, one thing we were talking about, my Travis Hunter is, is amazing. Best receiver probably in college football. I don't know all of college football, but I can't imagine. Some of those catches he made were just unbelievable. Plays both ways. The only guy to really do that with the number of snaps that he does that he's the best player in college football, but if he stays healthy and does what he did in that game, which I imagine he's going to put up some huge stats, Colorado is as bad as I thought they were going to be. I mean, I think we all saw it last night against North Dakota state. They're going to play much better teams than that. They're not going to win a whole lot of games. So as you pointed out, if they win three games, if they won, win four games, can you vote for him for the Heisman, I think if he's that much better than any other player on both sides of the ball, absolutely. What if he makes all American on both sides of the ball? Then I think, yes, he's still uh, the Heisman trophy winner, but it's going to be interesting to me. That's the most interesting thing about Colorado is what Travis Hunter is going to do. And does he have a chance at the Heisman? If Colorado is as bad as we think they're going to be win wise, three, four five games, whatever it is, but a losing record Can he still win the Heisman? This is one piece of college football trivia that I was aware of without having to look it up. Only one time has a player won the Heisman despite his team having a losing record. And Shireen, the thumbs up, tells me you know who it is. It's Horning, right, from Notre Dame. Two and eight, the Irish, in 1956. They were two and eight, and Paul Horning won the Heisman Trophy. With a team that was two and eight. Yeah. So, yeah, it's possible because it's happened, but it's happened once, and that was a long time ago. Um, so, I I do think Travis Hunter is spectacular, and I thought it was funny last night when the announcers were trying to predict which side of the ball he would play in the NFL – that tells me they don't pay attention to the pay structure in the NFL. <laughs> because right now, uh-huh. it's a no-brainer. Right. 21 versus 35. You're playing receiver in the NFL. Period. And, you know, maybe you want to emulate Dion, who was one of the all-time great corners. But not today, not now, not the way the market is. I'm going receiver. I'm going that way and maybe sprinkle in some defensive back. So I think it's it really is an easy question for Travis Hunter to resolve. The tougher question is, could he be the Heisman Trophy winner with a team that 
that would have a losing record. And I don't know how many Colorado games are going to be on TV, presumably most, if not all of them, because they do draw a crowd. They're kind of becoming like the Cowboys because they're going to be people yeah. who last year were rooting for Colorado. And now this year, there's going to be some of those people who were rooting for them last year. They're rooting against them this year. Just because, you know, it's too much. It's overexposure. The way Dion's handled himself with the media, not a lot of people are fans of that. So they're going to be on TV. And it's, you know, like, hell, it's not like it was when we were growing up when you saw one or two college yeah. football games a week. That all changed in the 80s. But they'll be on. People will be paying attention whether they win or lose. There's something magnetic about that program right now. And that means Travis Hunter is going to, going to be someone that people pay attention to. They're going to realize he's really good. And even if Colorado doesn't win another game, he's still going to potentially, potentially get enough votes to take the Heisman. And a lot of it depends upon the kind of performances others have. But he's going to be good enough to be in the conversation, good enough at a minimum to be invited to the ceremony. I was here at the end of Deion Sanders' reign with the Cowboys, and, you know, he did play some offense. Obviously, he was primarily a cornerback and why he went to the Hall of Fame, but he did play some offense and made a couple of big catches. Also, I hope that they let Travis Hunter play both ways because he is as good of a cornerback as he is a receiver, and it's hard to do both in the NFL. I get that. But I do hope they let him play some defensive back just because I think he's so good at it. And I would love to see and people would watch. People want to see a guy do what he's doing on both sides of the ball because it is so rare. And I do think he's one of those rare athletes that could play both ways in the NFL. And I, I don't see any NFL team allowing him to do it at the rate he does it at Colorado. But I hope they let him do it some in the NFL just because I think it would be so un unique. I don't. I mean, Dion's really the last one that, and he didn't do a ton of receiver, but he did enough that you knew he was a threat on offense. And when he came in the game, it was just so exciting on, to see him on offense. What is he going to do? Because you figured he, they were going to throw it to him. You make an interesting point as it relates to how you properly compensate Travis Hunter if he's playing both ways. His initial pay is going to be determined by his draft spot, and it doesn't matter whether you play both ways. It doesn't matter whether you play special teams. It doesn't matter what position you play. What you get paid is determined by where you are drafted. Now, sometimes with quarterbacks, they'll try a little something different, but there isn't much you can negotiate in these rookie deals. So if coach tells you you're playing both ways, you're playing both ways. Where it becomes challenging is contract number two. If he is playing both ways. I remember when Le'Veon Bell was negotiating with the Steelers. His argument was, I should be paid like RB1 and WR2 because that's what I am. I'm doing both things here. I'm lining up in the slot. I'm running pass routes. I'm a running threat and a receiving threat. It's an easier argument to make that you should get two paychecks if you're playing and doing two jobs. Great receiver and CB3, who knows? So that's where it really becomes thorny and unprecedented. What do you pay a guy that plays both sides of the ball? And that's an argument in and of itself for teams not to do it. But if you have a special talent, you know, you hear the cliche all the time, the coach speak, you want your best 11 players on the field. Mm -hmm. If he's one of your best 11 players for offense and defense, and he's got the conditioning, the stamina, the will to do it, why wouldn't you do it? And you should pay him. You should pay yeah. him because you, you've got one guy that is doing the work of two men. Especially if he's starting both ways, Mike. I don't know how you wouldn't pay him both ways, but he he's going to be one of the most interesting players that we've seen come out of college. But since maybe Charles Woodson, I don't know, but just – what he can do on both sides of the ball, um, it, it, it's teams are going to have to figure out where he's best and where are we starting him off. And then at that point, after he gets to know the offense or the defense, which I assume he will try to go be a receiver because of that pay scale that you talked about, 
But after he learns the offense, then do you start working him in a little bit on the defense, which I know he's going to want to do. I mean, he doesn't like coming out of the game. You could see that he lost his helmet one time and had to come out of the game. And he didn't like that. He likes to stay in the game the whole time. And he's obviously conditioned to do it. That's the other thing. There aren't many players who are conditioned well enough to, to play every single play on offense or defense. And yet he's doing it on both sides of the ball. It's just impressive what this kid's doing right now. Okay, you have a chance to win $1 million in the NBC sweepstakes on Yahoo Fantasy. Just download the redesigned Yahoo Fantasy app or go to NBCSports.com slash Fantasy Million for additional details. What are you waiting for? Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.